Such was the audience enthusiasm for this early print that Warners promptly authorised the production and release of a so-called director's cut, supervised by respected film archivist Michael Arick, to bring Blade Runner back into line with Ridley's original vision. The goal was to use the original release version as the spine and to go back and put in certain things that he missed and primarily take out the things he felt were damaging, like the narration and, and the tacked on happy ending. I'm very satisfied. Um, I think I'm glad we got the voiceover off. I'm glad we got the ending off. The ending didn't make any sense at all. And the ending the way we have it right now is fine. I wish I'd had a bit more action early on. Um, just pure action, just to r raise the blood. But I, I, obviously people don't need that now because they get the film. It's taken 20 years, really, for people to appreciate it um, and see it as sort of a first of its kind. I mean, now there's so many movies that have ripped off aspects of Blade Runner. It's people who, who don't know the film might, might not even think it was original, you know? <laughs> It was a very dim and dismal vision of what the future of America was going to be all about. And funnily enough, we're living it now. I mean, you just go down onto Skid Row and you see the squalor and the, 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 the human waste that is down there and, 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 and the multinational, multi-ethnic ethnicity of, of, of Los Angeles is now very evident. And everything that it, it said L.A. was going to be, it's slowly but surely creeping into reality. What we've done I think was a kind of rather, was a dark novel. It was rather novelistic. And uh, I didn't really realize that that eventually became the true longevity and value of the film, is that you can revisit, revisit it constantly, like rereading maybe one of your favorite books. And it, you always find, you always find you get sucked in again. I still think it's one of the best films I've made. The commercial and critical revival of Scott's movie in the 90s suggested that history had finally caught up with Blade Runner. Indeed, wherever you looked, from the pages of cyberpunk fiction to the visuals of sci-fi cinema, the style of MTV, and even the design of multimedia advertising and communication, it was clear that Blade Runner had actually shaped the face of the future. And the new director's cut, with its fleeting vision of a unicorn, also posed a question which has become the key enigma of Blade Runner, the possibility that even its human hero is actually a product of new technology, an android dreaming of electric sheep. So is Deckard really a replicant? Aha, uh -huh, I don't know. I still don't know. That is an enigma. No, I never thought he was a replicant. No, that, that's never, never in my mind. I think Deckard is a real guy, and I think he, he's in pain for it, and he knows he's going to live a long time and, like, suffer. Yes, of course he is. Otherwise, the movie doesn't make sense. You don't need just one more super-intelligent detective, you know, hunting these people down. Uh, Bryant calls him in deliberately. He's a replicant, and they all know it except Deckard. I know that Ridley wanted him to be, but I think that's kind of like a joke. And that's where the unicorn came from. When Harrison is on his piano, looking at all the photographs and wondering who these people are and what they're after, he's drinking, he's a bit drunk there, and as he drinks, you go off into the unicorn, so it's a reverie. And that was the only reference right there to this abstract image, which is a unicorn. Because at the end of it, he comes out of his thought process. And that never occurs again till the end of the movie. Because when he comes in that apartment, he thinks that he's gone in there and killed her. Because they know where she is. And uh, when they come out, there it is. Looks like a unicorn. And it means? He's a replicant. Will we ever know? What we do know, though, is that this week's Sunday movie on 4 is Stephen King's chilling thriller, Misery, tomorrow at 10.